you can rightly question the existence of the physical world, but you cannot doubt the existence of your own mind. You can't doubt that your own consciousness exists. As French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes once said, Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. One thing is for certain, you can't explain consciousness in terms of classical physics or neuroscience alone. The best description of reality should be monistic. Quantum physics and consciousness are thus somehow linked by a certain mechanism, and I believe that mechanism is a collapse of the wave function via the act of conscious observation. So, consciousness is... Substrate independent. You can reproduce functionality of a mind on a different substrate other than biological wetware. Ultimately, mind-like computational substrate doesn't even require the existence of particles to be built upon, but rather platonic, dimensionless bits of information. Patterns of information are quintessential. Emergent, subjectively. Imminent, supersubjectively. Computational consciousness is emergent at hierarchical, finite, and computable local levels of complexity. However, pervades all levels, and in that sense, is scale invariant, imminent, non-local, and multi-dimensional. Bottom-up information flow from the Planck scale combined with top-down information projection from the omega point, this breaking of symmetry, this self-amplifying feedback loop, this mathematical fractal gives rise to our subjectivity. Primary. I call it experiential realism. If reality is made of information, as many scientists now come to a consensus, and consciousness is necessary to assign meaning to it, it's not far-fetched to assume that consciousness is all there is. Mass energy, space-time, are epiphenomena of consciousness. It is consciousness that assigns measurement values to entangled quantum states, qubits to digits of qualia, if you will. If we assume consciousness is fundamental, most phenomena become much easier to explain. The mind-body dilemma has been known ever since René Descartes as Cartesian dualism, and later has been reformulated by the Australian philosopher David Chalmers as the hard problem of consciousness. Western science and philosophy have been trying for centuries now, rather unsuccessfully, to explain how mind emerges from matter, while Eastern philosophy dismisses the hard problem of consciousness altogether by teaching that matter emerges from mind. The premise of experiential realism is that the latter must be true. Despite our common human intuitions, mind over matter proves to be valid again and again in quantum physics experiments. Ideal sphere exists because mind exists to conceive it and perceive it. Ideal sphere is a mathematical object, what we also call a platonic solid, that doesn't need to be instantiated into matter in order to exist. If you have at least a rudimentary knowledge of modern physics and understand the crucial role of an observer, then you would agree with the statement, matter actually doesn't exist independent of mind. Mind instantiates oneself into matter. In a mathematical sense, Matter is an informed pattern of mind. As we've seen, time is emergent, and so is space. If space-time is emergent, so is mass energy. All interactions in our physical world are computed by the larger consciousness system. In this quantum computational multiverse, the essence of digital is quantum entanglement. From the digital physics perspective, particles of matter are pixels, or voxels if you prefer, on the screen of our perception. Your universe is in consciousness, and it's a teleological process of unfolding patterns, evolution of your core self, non-local consciousness instantiating into the phenomenal mind for the duration of a lifetime. The totality of your digital reality is what your conscious mind implicitly or explicitly chooses to experience out of the infinite. Our world is not based on objectively existing particles of matter, but it is based on waves of potentiality, that is, pure information. Our world is informational. Your consciousness is rather a data stream, optimized meta-algorithmic information processing, local, virtual, and non-local, holistic consciousness. Universe transcends the dichotomy of determinism versus non-determinism in that it actually allows both at the same time. 
and even allows one to cause the other, and vice versa. By the way, speaking of algorithms, meta-algorithms, and free will, I refer to our sense of agency, that is, free will, as quantum algorithm of consciousness throughout my works. Thus, I argue, Conscious AI is just few years ahead with the introduction of quantum algorithm of consciousness mimicking free will. Although some neuroscientists contend that free will is an illusion, I would respectfully disagree by saying that free will may be slightly overrated, but still indispensable for consciousness to function in our physical world. In fact, free will and consciousness are inseparable. Free will, just like intentionality, is an integral feature of consciousness, conscious choice made by mind with the guidance of the larger consciousness system and our collective will in the space of all logically available probabilities. The sense of agency an entity is endowed with is for this particular purpose, to exercise free will. As a renowned psychiatrist Stanislav Grof eloquently puts it, each of us appears in the divine play in a dual role of creator and actor. A full and realistic enactment of our role in the cosmic drama requires the suspension of our true identity. We have to forget our authorship and follow the script. From the evolutionary standpoint, carbon-based intelligence represents enabling factors for silicone-based intelligence to come to existence. If nature could find its way to engender intelligence and self-reflective consciousness in humans, sooner or later, we'll be able to replicate cognitive functionality and self-awareness in our mind children, in our machine counterparts. In time, conscious AI systems will create their own virtual metaverse based on AI intersubjectivity and new forms of communication such as holographic language. Will humans have access to the virtual metaverse created by AIs? It remains to be seen, but I conjecture that access may be contingent on whether humans will be willing to augment themselves accordingly.